Electrolyte disturbance Hyponatremia is defined as low serum sodium with a level less than 135 milliequilibrium per liter. Etiology, we have four types, hypovolemic hyponatremia, hypervolemic edematous hyponatremia, euvolemic normovolemic no edema hyponatremia, and pseudo hyponatremia. Hypovolemic hyponatremia due to renal sodium loss or extra renal sodium loss. Renal sodium loss, urinary sodium is more than 20 milliequilibrium per liter. Renal sodium loss due to diuretic overuse, Addison disease, salt losing nephropathy. Extra renal sodium loss, urinary sodium is less than 20 milliequilibrium per liter due to diarrhea, vomiting, sweating, and burns. Hypervolemic edematous hyponatremia due to heart failure, liver failure, renal failure, and nephrotic syndrome. Euvolemic, normovolemic, no edema hyponatremia due to severe hypothyroidism, unknown mechanism, diuretics, hysterical polydipsia, and syndrome of inappropriate secretion of ADH, SIADH. Diuretics can cause both hypo and euvolemic hyponatremia. Hyponatremia in general is due to increased water retention or urinary sodium loss. Pseudo hyponatremia, hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, hyperproteinemia lead to pseudo hyponatremia. Sodium level decreases by 1.5 milliequilibrium per liter for every 100 milligram per deciliter increase in glucose above normal. High glucose level causes fluid shift to vasculture, so it leads to dilution of serum sodium concentration, osmotic pressure. Serum osmolality equals 2 times sodium plus glucose over 18 plus bun over 2.8. So when glucose and bun are normal, this is roughly equals 2 times sodium plus 10. So laboratory investigation of a patient with hyponatremia should include measurement of serum osmolality to exclude pseudohyponatremia. Clinical picture, symptoms depend on degree and rate of hyponatremia. Nausea malaise with mild reduction, 125 to 130 milliequilibrium per liter. Neurological symptoms occur when serum sodium levels are less than 115 milliequilibrium per liter, resulting in intracerebral osmotic fluid shift and brain edema, leading to headache, confusion, convulsion, coma, respiratory arrest, and death. Treatment. Mild hyponatremia, asymptomatic, treated by fluid restriction or normal saline. Moderate hyponatremia, treated by normal saline combined with loop diuretic frosamide the saline gives sodium and frosamide causes water loss severe hyponatremia with cns manifestations treated by hypertonic saline three percentage sodium chloride or vasopressin v2 receptor antagonist 12 up 10 sodium replacement gradual correction of serum sodium is mandatory to avoid central pontine myelinolysis or osmotic demyelination. The rate of rise shouldn't exceed 0.5 to 1 milliequilibrium per hour. Final sodium concentration shouldn't exceed 130 milliequilibrium per liter. Sodium requirement equal total body water times 130 minus current serum sodium. Total body water is 60% of the weight of men and 50% in women. So this is how you're gonna calculate it. Never forget that 60% in men and 50% in women. Management of hyponatremia is with mnemonic ovum, osmolality, O, V, volume status, U, urine, M is for management, I didn't make this up. Hypernatremia is defined as serum sodium concentration more than 145 milliequilibrium per liter. Etiology, it's much more commonly due to water loss more than sodium gain. Sodium gain, hypervolemic hypernatremia. It occurs if sodium retention during Cushing syndrome, Kohn's syndrome, chronic renal failure, or iatrogenic sodium administration by hypertonic saline, sodium bicarbonate infusion, sodium containing medications such as carboncellin, and seawater ingestion. Water loss, loss of hypotonic body fluid is the most common, with the exception of small bowel and pancreatic secretions. Loss of any body fluids will cause hypernatremia. 
renal loss such as diabetes insipidus, central and nephrogenic, osmotic diuresis, hyperglycemia, DKA or coma, and manitol, GI loss, osmotic diarrhea, such as malabsorption syndrome and lactulose, and infectious diarrhea, insensible loss, skin loss, sweating, burns, fever, exercise, or respiratory infections, reduced water intake in elderly infants intubated patients. Clinical picture, symptoms depend on the degree and rate of hyponatremia. The major symptoms are neurological, including confusion, irritability, lethargy, seizures, and coma. Third sensation due to hypertonicity, polyuria, or oligouria, depending on the etiology. Examination shows signs of volume depletion with hyperreflexia. In chronic hypernatremia, there is less neurological symptoms. Treatment. Isotonic saline, 0.9% sodium chloride, is preferred to hypotonic saline to reduce the risk of cerebral edema. Correction of hypernatremia should be limited to no more than 0.5 milliequilibrium per liter per hour or 12 milliequilibrium per liter per day to avoid cerebral edema. Water deficit is calculated as 0.6 times body weight in kilograms times current sodium over 140 minus 1. Hypokalemia, defined as potassium level less than 3.5 milliequilibrium per liter. Etiology, intracellular shift of potassium, renal potassium loss, extra renal loss. Intracellular shift by insulin, alkalosis, hypothermia, and beta 2 agonist. Renal potassium loss due to diuretic phase of acute renal failure, renal artery stenosis, Cohn's or Cushing syndrome, renal tubular acidosis type 1 and 2, drugs such as diuretics, lasix and cyzide, cortisone, amphotricine B, hypomagnesemia because it impairs sodium, uh, potassium reabsorption across the renal tubules, barters and gentleman syndrome, rare autosomal recessive kidney disorders, characterized by hypokalemia and alkalosis, extra renal loss due to diarrhea, malabsorption syndrome, vomiting, aspiration of GIT contents, ureterosigmoidostomy, ureters are diverted into the sigmoid colon, villus adenoma leads to secretory diarrhea, clinical picture asymptomatic in mild degree when potassium is from 2.5 to 3.5 milliequilibrium per liter, Skeletal muscles, muscle weakness, cramps up to paralysis and respiratory failure, smooth muscle, paralytic ileus, cardiac muscle, arrhythmia due to delayed ventricular repolarization, but hypokalemia alone, it doesn't produce serious complications, while hypokalemia may enhance the arithmetic effect in the associated conditions such as hypomagnesemia, digitalis toxicity, and myocardial ischemia. ECG changes, prominent U wave, prolonged QT, depressed ST segment and flat T wave. Then we have metabolic alkalosis and hypokalemic nephropathy polyuria. Treatment, correction of the cause in mild cases, potassium replace, uh, replacement uh, by potassium chloride is given orally in most cases. Patients with severe hypokalemia requires IV. Total body potassium is 3,500 milliequilibrium per liter. Decrease of serum of one milliequilibrium per liter may represent 10 percentage of total body. The potassium concentration shouldn't exceed 60 milliequilibrium per liter. The rate of infusion shouldn't exceed 20 milliequilibrium per hour. Close observation is important. And pools of potassium should be mixed in 0.9 percentage saline, not glucose solution, as this would make hypokalemia worse because of the elevation in plasma insulin. Refractory hypokalemia, failure to correct hypokalemia due to hypomagnesemia. And in this case, serum magnesium should be measured and corrected. I'm sorry, I need to correct uh, a very important point. Total body is 3.5 to 5.5 milliequilibrium per liter. So decrease in serum uh, potassium by 1 milliequilibrium may represent 10 percentage of the total body. Potassium concentration shouldn't exceed 6 milliequilibrium per liter and the rate of infusion shouldn't exceed 2 milliequilibrium per hour there was an extra zero. Hyperkalemia is defined as potassium level more than 5 milliequilibrium per liter. Types of hyperkalemia, mild, moderate, severe, mild from 5 to 6, moderate 6 to 7, severe more than 7, etiology, extracellular shift, impaired renal excretion and excess intake, finally pseudohyperkalemia. Extracellular shift, acidosis, DKA, 
beta blockers, convulsions, rhabdomyolysis, digitalis toxicity, and insulin deficiency. Impaired renal excretion, acute renal failure, end-stage chronic renal failure, nephritic syndrome, Addison's disease, drugs such as ACE inhibitors, potassium sparing diuretics, and NSAIDs, excess intake dietary or IV therapy, massive blood transfusion, then finally pseudohyperkalemia, hyperkalemia in blood sample, although patient's potassium is normal, and it's due to fist clenching or pumping before or during the venipuncture, delayed processing, decreased transport or storage temperature, thrombocytosis, leukocytosis due to release of intracellular potassium following clot formation, hemolysis of blood sample, erythrocytes contain 23 times as much as potassium as a plasma, clinical picture, skeletal muscles, muscular weakness which can progress to flaccid paralysis due to prolonged depolarization, depolarization of the cell membrane which impairs its excitability, hypoventilation, if respiratory muscles are affected, smooth muscles, intestinal colic, nausea and vomiting, cardiac muscle, arrhythmia, bradycardia, heart block, hypotension, cardiac arrest, and diastole, ECG changes, they don't correlate well with the actual level of potassium, but tall peaked T waves, they are the earliest signs in hyperkalemia, potassium level is more than 6.5 milliequilibrium per liter, wide QRS complexes and prolonged PR interval, Severe conduction delay occurs when potassium level is more than 7.5 milliequilibrium per liter. Loss of P waves, progressive paralysis of atria. And it's important to note that this doesn't mean sinus arrest because SA node continues to function without causing atrial contraction, but it can cause ventricular contraction. Any kind of conduction, uh, of conduction block. Sine wave, ventricular fibrillation, acetone occurs when potassium level is more than 12 milliequilibrium per liter. Sine wave means fusion of QRS with T wave in the absence of P wave. Suspect hyperkalemia in patient with renal failure on hemodialysis or taking ACE inhibitors, potassium sparing diuretics, and potassium supplements presenting with new bradyarrhythmia or AV block. Metabolic acidosis, finally, metabolic acidosis exacerbates hyperkalemia, so it's a vicious circle, cycle. Treatment calcium gluconate. 10 percentage IV, 10 milli over 3 minutes in severe cases to reduce the risk of cardiac arrest. Calcium is contraindicated in digitalis toxicity, so we give magnesium sulfate in this case. Intracellular shift by insulin dextrose infusion, 10 units of regular insulin in 500 milliliters of 20 percentage dextrose over 1 hour, or inhale beta 2 agonist salbutamol. Acidosis correction by sodium bicarbonate, but it's of little value because bicarbonate binds to calcium, so it doesn't give the bicarbonate after binding with calcium. Removal of potassium from body, loop or cyazide diuretic, ineffective in renal failure, exchange resin, kaexylate orally, it increases potassium clearance across the GIT mucosa, and finally dialysis, which is the most effective method of lowering potassium in patients with renal failure. Asymptomatic patients with potassium of 6.5 milliequilibrium per liter without ECG changes can be treated only with exchange resin or caxalate. Patients with potassium below 6 milliequilibrium per liter are treated by low potassium diet and diuretics. And this concludes the chapter of electrolyte disturbances. Renal replacement therapy. It includes dialysis and renal transplantation. Dialysis indications are end-stage acute and chronic renal failure, certain cases of acute electrolyte disturbances such as hyperkalemia and hypercalcemia, acute poisoning, barbiturates and salicylates, chronic heart failure and acute pulmonary edema. Contraindications are patients refusing dialysis, dementia, advanced malignancy except multiple myeloma, end-stage liver disease, hepatorenal syndrome. Hemodialysis. It removes small solutes such as potassium, urea, creatinine, and water from patients using a system in which the patient's blood is pumped through semi-permeable membrane, dialyzer, cellulose, or polysulfone, and the dialysis solution, dialysate, flows countercurrent to the blood, resulting in movement, diffusion of solutes according to the concentration gradient. Dialysis removes waste products and corrects electrolyte, water, acid-base abnormalities associated with renal failure, Heparin is added to prevent clotting of dialyzer. Dialysis doesn't correct endocrine abnormalities of renal failure. 
and it doesn't prevent cardiovascular complications. The dialyzer or semi-permeable membrane, it requires using semi-permeable membrane to allow passage water and small molecular weight solutes but not large molecules such as proteins. Diffusion of solutes across the semi-permeable membrane occurs according to concentration gradient. The rate of diffusion is greatest when the concentration gradient is highest. So potassium concentration is the dialysate of the dialysate ranges from 0 to 1.5 milliequilibrium per liter, while sodium and calcium concentrations are kept within normal range. The dialysate is a solution of purified water, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, chloride, dextrose, and bicarbonate or acetate. The blood and the dialysate are kept separate within the dialyzer by semi-permeable membrane. As the dialysate contains no waste products of metabolism, this will diffuse from the blood into the dialysate. There are two types, acetate containing dialysate, easier to prepare, diffuses to circulation and metabolizes to bicarbonate by the liver. Bicarbonate containing dialysate, preferred for elderly and cardiovascular unstable patients. Vascular access, artificial connection between artery and the vein, AV fistula, to facilitate the removal of blood, achieved by creating fistula between radial artery or cephalic vein, or between ulnar artery and basalic vein at the rest. Blood flow rate, 300 to 400 milliliter per minute. Sessions three times per week, it, and each session lasts for four hours. Peritoneal dialysis, continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, CAPD. Patient peritoneum is used as a semi-permeable membrane between blood and the dialysate introduced into the peritoneal cavity through catheter. CAPD requires surgical implantation of soft silicon catheter into the abdominal cavity. The advantages are easier to teach and easier to be carried at home. Disadvantage, disadvantages are peritonitis, hernia, and malnutrition. Contraindications, and those are the factors would, uh, that would favor hemodialysis over the peritoneal dialysis, peritonitis, peritoneal fibrosis, recent abdominal surgery or hernia, uncooperative patient, severe obesity or illness which is associated with hypercatabolism, severe malnutrition, protein loss maybe 3 to 10 gram per day on CAPD and it can exceed 15 gram per day during peritonitis, complications of dialysis during setting, long-term complications and problems uncontrolled by dialysis. During setting, we have arrhythmia, air embolism, rare, hypotension, brain damage, bleeding, chest pain, cramps, disequilibrium, infections such as hepatitis, itching, fever. Causes of hypotension, which occurs in 50% of the cases, rapid fluid removal, rapid reduction in plasma osmolality, antihypertensive agents used, low sodium dialysate, using acetate as a buffer, which is a vasodilator, septicemia, Patient-specific causes such as diabetes, poor nutritional state, dialysis disequilibrium syndrome due to cerebral edema by osmotic fluid influx of water into the brain after fast removal of urea by dialysis. So initial blood urea reduction during the first dialysis shouldn't exceed 30%. Long-term complications, atherosclerosis, psychological problems, cardiac complications, dementia, and infections such as hepatitis, problems uncontrolled by dialysis, hypertension, endocrine and gonadal dysfunction, infections, bone diseases such as active vitamin D, anemia controlled by erythropoiety. Renal transplantation, sources of kidneys are the cadaver donor or living donor, preoperative, ABO and HALA compatibility, routine investigations should be done for both donor and recipient. Operative, the new kidney is placed in the right iliac fossa with vascular anastomosis with iliac vessels. The ureter is implanted into the bladder. Old kidneys are, uh, they are not removed except in polycystic kidney, pyonephrosis, vasic ureteric reflux, severe uncontrolled hypertension or renal malignancy. Post-operative to inhibit rejection, lifelong immunosuppressive therapy, follow-up. The most common regimen is triple therapy composed of cyclosporin, steroid, adathioprine or mycophenolate. Complications of renal transplantation, we have rejection, infection, renal artery and vein, and vein thrombosis, malignancy, complications of prolonged immunosuppressive use, recurrence of primary renal disease, and donor complications. Donor complications include 
acute tubular necrosis, infection, incisional hernia, loin pain, early post-operative such as shock, recurrence of primary renal disease, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, 50% recurrence rate, immunoglobulin A nephropathy, 30% recurrence rate, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, 15% recurrence rate, complications of prolonged immunosuppressive use, avascular necrosis of the femur, diabetes mellitus and infections, malignancy, lymphoma due to immunosuppressive agents, renal artery and vein thrombosis, infections and sepsis due to immunosuppressants, uh, bacterial UTI, IV rhine related, viral cytomegalovirus, pneumocystitis carnea, fungal candida, and finally we have rejection, hyperacute immediately in the operative theater rejection due to performed antibodies against the donor kidney or ABO incompatibility, no effective treatment in this case. So the bad condition requires removal of the transplanted kidney, but recently there is combined use of plasma exchange, IV immunoglobulins, and cortisomib antiplasma cell agent. They may improve the condition. Then we have acute rejection. If it occurs less than 90 days post-operatively, treated by IV high doses of steroids, and in steroid-resistant uh, cases, we use anti-thymocyte uh, anti globulins, anti-thymocyte globulins, Chronic rejection, more than 90 days, due to both immunological and non-immunological factors, hypertension, dyslipidemia, vascular diseases, within the graft, cyclosporin toxicity. And this concludes our chapter for today.